Since I'm 50, I figure my thoughts have gone up from a penny to a nickel. Here's my inspiration for today and what I'd like you to contemplate in this short episode. Hey everyone, quick little bonus episode that I wanted to do. I just got in from a walk. That's why I don't have a nice shirt on, but I put a little lipstick on. So there's that. It was really important to me that I do this episode while it's fresh. And I feel really, really like this has to get done because I know there's someone out there listening or watching who needs to hear this message. So today I did my mastermind in the morning and my partner said, hey, you got to check out this book. So I went on to read about it. I thought, oh, let's just go over to my books. I wonder if I've gotten any reviews. I'd well, gotten some more reviews and I got my first one star review. I only have one star review. And ironically, it made me chuckle because it's on the spiritual clutter prompts. And I have to admit, I was really bummed out. At first, I was like, Ooh, right? And my heart just stopped because one of my biggest fears that had prevented me, not prevented me because I obviously have got 15 books I've published, but slowed me down was, oh, what's going to happen if I get criticized? never done podcasting, never done interviewing. And I'm actually a good podcaster. I think I know I'm a good interviewer, but I'm a writer. Like if you describe me, say, describe your subject, I'm a writer. I'd say that for years because of all the blog, I mean, grant writing, and I'm considered myself a very good writer. My grammar is atrocious, but that's why you have editors. So anyway, it was just kind of like a stab through the heart. It was one of those one stars. It didn't have any feedback. So I couldn't learn from it. And I've always said I'm open to constructive criticism. So I wanted to share with you my process because especially if you have a book you want to write, you want to paint, you want to do a metal sculpture, you want to start a new job, right? Fear can hold us back. So I want to talk a little bit about my process. And again, that's why I'm in my out, get my mileage in, out getting over. I've got about 8,000 steps now and it's just about two o'clock. So that was my biggest fear and it became a reality. So the first thing I did, I was on Amazon. So I went to authors that I liked and they had one star reviews and some boy, oh boy, oh, talk about being mean. Now I know, I think on another episode, I don't know which one I shared. I've gotten one star reviews on the podcast. I have shared that on YouTube, someone's like absolutely hate your voice. And ironically, they listened to the end based on their comment, which made me chuckle. I have gotten some mean comments. I had someone go off on me in the U.S. telling me I wasn't qualified, yada, yada, yada. I had someone in Canada (laughs) wasn't mean enough the first round, had to come back and write an even meaner review. Again, I'm open to constructive criticism always, and I'm not everyone's cup of tea, but I just sometimes don't get people who take the time to just be vicious. So anyway, so I looked up a couple different authors like I don't, is it Brene, Bren Brown? And I was like, dang, she's got one star. Now the majority are five stars, but I thought if Bren Brown and my favorite authors who are awesome can get one star, then this is a badge of honor, a rite of passage, if you will. So I thought, you know, people who I think who are on the world stage, they're getting one stars. And, you know, I'll never forget, I think the greatest rendition of America's national anthem is by Whitney Houston. I mean, in her prime, Her best singing years, wow, what a voice. I think it's probably the best rendition I've ever heard. I think it was at the Olympics sporting event. Anyway, people thumbs down to that and criticize them. I thought if probably one of the best in the world, if not ever, can get criticized, then I'm in good company. So I want you to remember that. People on the national world stage are getting one-star reviews. That was the first thing I did. And then I took a step back and said, they might be competitors. I'm putting that in quotation because I don't see us as, as competitors. I know I've had people who think they're competing with me, you know, rate and review my podcast poorly. And then other things, it is what it is, right? I have zero control over that. So maybe it's someone like that. Maybe it, it is someone who just didn't like the book. Maybe it's someone who I annoyed in high school. and You know, who knows? It doesn't matter what it is. But I share that because when our first like that heart, what other people do is about them and how you respond is about you. So it could be a variety of things and it doesn't matter what it is, but I always like to share that because that keeps it in perspective with me. Might've been someone who never read the book. And then I said, okay, so I'm going to look at other reviews about people that I like. 
And then I said, you've got two five-star reviews on that particular book and you've got all five stars and you've got another three stars. Well, that's okay because I'm not for everyone. So I said, but the majority of reviews are five stars. So that's what you got to focus on. Next thing I did, I texted my mastermind partner and then I texted my best friend. And then I said to Tony, let's go for a walk. Beautiful day here. We worked up a sweat, got in a couple of miles, burned some calories, did that with him, came back and worked for more and walked for a little bit more. Cause I just was like, you know what? I'm upset. I want to feel my feelings. I want to just kind of walk through this and do it because I'm hurt. So that was kind of the first overall step that I did to take care of myself. Okay. What in this moment, cause I'm, my feelings are hurt and I'm upset. What do I need to do to take care of myself? So then the second thing I did was let's review fact, right? Just the fact, ma'am, as Joe Friday would say, or just the facts, ma'am. I had my books edited twice for grammar because my grammar sucked. I had it edited for content. I had it a professional cover created and I spent countless hours on this. Now I could have edited till the cows came home and I knew there was a point like you just have to launch it. You might find a typo. You might want to reword something differently in the future and perhaps I'll go back and give everything a glance. But not only did I edit on the computer, I ordered proofs and edited it. And, and if you write a book, I encourage that because looking at a computer screen all day, you just never know what you're going to it just is different and you can catch some things. So anyway, I know that those are the facts and I did the best that I could. So I put out the best possible product and, and that's honor. I feel it was honest. It was honorable and I did the best I could. And then after I reviewed the facts, I went through and I found, I keep emails, people a lot of times from the podcast will write me. So I have a collection of those from my raving fans. I read those. I reread positive reviews. I looked at everyone I've supported who has said to me, you've made a difference in my life. I read thank you notes. I looked at my little thing from my niece who reminds me, you are my role model and that someone out there is paying attention. I reminded myself, you're making different to many people through your podcast, through your YouTube video, through your books, through your coaching, you are making a difference. You're supporting people and taking action and moving forward to create the life they desire. And then I reminded myself, I can't please everyone. And that's what my mastermind partner said. You know what? You can't please everyone. And she said, and maybe they just didn't understand what a journal prompt book was and the purpose. And then I said to myself, you don't resonate with everyone. And that's okay. I, no one can. I talked about all these world famous people who've inspired millions and they don't resonate with everyone. There are people that can still find criticism for them. And then the last thing I did was dusted myself off and reminded myself, just move forward. Keep writing your books, keep blogging, keep podcasting, keep YouTubing, keep moving forward because you are making a difference. I'll never forget living in California when I'd first moved out there and I was getting a facial done and the woman told me how she wanted to be an actress. And very early on, someone said, you're not pretty enough. You're not good enough. You're not going to make it. And she listened to that person. And she said she always regretted not pursuing her dream. So I'm going to encourage you pursue that dream, put that piece of art out there because you are going to positively influence someone and the world needs your gifts more now than ever. And I've mentioned, I've been criticized on YouTube, criticized on the podcast. Why would I expect the books to be no different? So if you put yourself out there, just know that it's going to happen. And my, fi my day finally came. I'm considering it a rite of passage, like woohoo. But share your gifts with the world. No, you are making a difference. You are positively influencing someone. Go out, clear your clutter to create the life you choose, deserve, and desire. Clearing your clutter allows you to share your gifts with the world. Get your free self-assessment to discover your clutter priority at reawakenyourbrilliance.com. If you've enjoyed Clear Your Clutter Inside and Out, please rate, review, and share us.